A few weeks back, I headed out to Copenhagen in Denmark, and I was visiting my friends in Norway, and I had this little side trip in Copenhagen because uh, it sort of, sort of worked out the best that way with the airfare. And uh, my friends are in Bergen in Norway, so there's no direct flights. So I figured, well, I'll take a side trip to some place in Europe. And Copenhagen is a place I wanted to go for a while, um, mainly because of the, the philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, who sort of spent his whole life around here. So I did my best to track down all his locations, sort of places that, that still look like they did back in his time, which is amazing. And uh, I, I actually created a map of all these important locations in his life, and I linked to it in the description below. Um, and I tracked down a fair number of them, but there's a couple places that I didn't track down. So check out that map for a more complete, you know, thorough understanding of it. But uh, this video, I, I tracked down a, a decent number and uh, beautiful, beautiful summer days. And I really got lucky with the weather. Um, apparently it had been raining like the week right before and people were telling me that I timed the weather really decently. So I was really happy. It's funny because actually they they mentioned kind of something similar when I visited Edinburgh. They said, oh, the weather is pretty good now. You know, you picked a good time to come. And that was in January, actually. So, um, yeah. So <laughs> timing is, is was really good for this trip. Really happy with it. So, um, yeah, it, it's probably going to be a long video because there's lots of clips. Uh, I took a lot of video <laughs> on this one. Uh, and I'll try my best to sort of annotate it and uh, so you can correspond it to places on the map. And uh, well, enjoy uh, Søren Kierkegaard's uh, Copenhagen. Here we go. What is behind me is uh, what is now the design museum, but it used to be the hospital, and that's the hospital where Kierkegaard actually died. He spent his final days. It's kind of like the cemetery. It's kind of morbid, and we kind of go there to commemorate the, the person, but they only spent a small portion of their life there, actually, so <laughs> their life was much bigger than that. But this is basically the end of Kierkegaard's life here. Behind me is the Black Diamond, which is sort of an extension or the main building of the, uh, the library here. And uh, unless you have special permission re to research, you can't really see anything related to Kierkegaard. I, I went in there and looked at the information desk and right now they have an exhibit um, that's colonial, Danish colonialism or something like that. I wasn't too interested, but uh, I guess they had a, an exhibit previously, but I missed it. so. Um, they just sort of have a gift shop and they have a sort of like a blank notebook with Kierkegaard's picture on it and like a tote bag with a random quote that I've never heard before on it that just sounded good. So just like nice uh, commercialism, but uh, nothing special um, if you're going for Kierkegaard. But they do have two cafes. Well, one restaurant that's called Soren K, Soren K, and also another place, uh, I can't pronounce it and I forget the name of it, but it's, uh, I think sort of the more cheaper option and that's a place that is also sort of related the, the name is related it's uh, the name of a, uh, a newspaper or a magazine that Kierkegaard uh, was the editor for back in the day so uh, those are the only signs now of Kierkegaard but uh, I'm gonna head right now across the street where there's a garden over there somewhere in that direction it looks like where the trees are and um, yeah, I'm gonna see his statue, so that'll be good. So, uh, yeah, we'll say say goodbye to the uh, the black obelisk or black diamond or whatever it's called. Uh, it's a strange building, and uh, head to the gardens. <laughs> 